Humans have danced and played music since the dawn of time. Proof of this are the fragments of a 40,000-year-old Neanderthal bone flute that archaeologists discovered in Serbia. Even today, many of the world's cultures use dance and rituals to connect to a higher spiritual entity. Half of these cultures believe in some form of spirit possession. Many gods, one god. Spirits, jinn, angels, or devils, humans believe the world is populated with invisible forces that can be communicated with through meditation and rhythmic movement. Or is man only communicating with his inner self? Dance as therapy has also existed since the dawn of time. But not all dance leads to trance or resolution of inner conflicts. Special conditions are required before the mind will give itself over to an altered state of consciousness. The most important of these conditions is the right type of music. The music of the Tsar, the most prevalent form of trance dancing in East Africa and the Middle East, does indeed meet the required conditions. No one knows exactly where the Tsar comes from. Some believe it originated either in Ethiopia, Sudan, Iran, or even Pharaonic Egypt. We do know that today thousands of women in Africa and the Middle East use this music to cure all kinds of illnesses. During the ceremonies, they literally dance until they drop. In some African countries, the gatherings can go on for a week. Seven days of intense drumming and dancing throughout the nights until the light of dawn and exhaustion overcome them. The Tsar is a complete world unto itself. It has unforgettable characters and a mystic supernatural setting. The music grows on you and the smell of perfume and incense is intoxicating. The relief participants feel after a czar is real, albeit temporary. Experiencing a state of trance is cathartic, and the feeling of well-being that follows lasts for days, whether you believe in the existence of jinn or not. Are the spirits real? Are the women possessed? The women believe that they are. Remember, these patients turn to the Tsar after modern medicine has failed them. Depression and other psychological diseases, while acknowledged in Egypt and Africa, are hardly accepted in the mainstream. Even if they were, these poor women couldn't afford the proper medications anyway. Faith becomes their healer, along with a little exercise and a healthy dose of serotonin. The czar can't replace a medical cure, but it is better than nothing.